Good day, everyone, and welcome back to Derail Valley. Um, so the next job we have here uh, is this wonderful shunting job here. Uh, it's it. It's got a time bonus of 105 minutes, so this this one's probably going to take a little bit of time here to do. Um, it's got free drop-offs, uh, so uh, this is probably going to take a bit. Uh, but it what? Hmm. How do I explain this one? So this one's going to be a little bit interesting because a it's a pretty heavy train, so it's going to take us a little while to get this thing moving uh, throughout the yard here. Uh, it's also somewhat on the lengthy side, but I'm not too concerned about the length. The more interesting thing, though, is uh, what exactly needs done. So why don't we just pop on over to uh, the remote dispatch and take a look at that for a second. Okay, so I have the remote dispatcher enabled here so we can take a look at it and see what's going on. So our train that we are wanting to pick up is right here. It's SU-28. This is it right here. And the first thing we're going to want to do before we do anything else, uh, let's take a look here at what we're having to do. So we're going to be taking it to B1L to unload, which is right over here. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to need to store the cars um, in these different yards. We have three different parts of the yard here to store it in. Uh, I said three different yards, three different tracks assignments so we have d1s b3s and b2s now d1s should sound pretty familiar here uh because in the last episode uh we just parked oh i can't remember how many trains the cars but we parked a we parked some cars here onto d1s so uh we actually have the you know the sign here is right here so what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to uh back these this you know cut of cars here uh, we're going to have to do it four cars back. So this car here, we need to back up to about right here so that we can fit uh, these four cars here onto here. So that's the first thing we're going to want to do. We're going to want to back this up four cars. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull forward here and hook up to uh, SU-28 here on D6I. All right, now this is where it gets interesting, and this is why we're actually looking at it here uh, in the remote dispatcher view here. This is why it's nice to have remote dispatcher. It allows you to uh, plan things out here and really take a look at what's going on in the yard here. So when we're hooked up here to SU-28, we have two options here on how we can proceed. We can pull forward here and go through the circle, or we could just pull forward somewhat so our end, of the end of the train is past the switch here and then back it in to B1L. Both options are valid, but one has uh, some advantages over the other. So let us say we back it in, okay? If we back it in, we run into an interesting little problem here. Uh, backing it in on this side of it here, so this is uh, where we came in. So this is the uh, this is our um, you know this is our coming in point here. Uh, this come next up to the main line down there. Uh, on this side. We actually have access to switches that allow us to connect up uh, to B3S, B2S, and B1. And we can control them here. All right, We can come in here and we can uh, you know, back, uh, place cars on the tracks here like this. On this side though, all right, so on the other side of the switch here for B2S uh, and B1S, we can actually, you know, we can do the same here. But look at this, B3S, it has a switch over here. So if we back in this way, the only way we can get to B3S is if we go all the way up here. This is the switch that will allow us to get onto C3LP, and C3LP allows us to switch onto B3S. So remember, our engine's in the front here. We pull forward. We back up, so the engine is now in the back of the you know cut of cars here, relative to the direction we're moving. All right, so we're in reverse here. We come out to here, and now the engine is on this side of the tracks. So if we uh, need to back, so let's say we're backing cars in here, we can back to you know the two cars there, assuming they're in the back there. We can back them onto here and leave them here, no problem. But then the next free cut, you know, it's next free cars. We're going to have to pull all the way forward here to this switch and then back it up again just to put the free cars here on B3S. 
that's a long distance to go there. Now, on the other hand, uh, if we take the four cars and we go through it, the engine is now in the front. The engine is on this side and we can use these switches. We can back cars uh, into here, separate any cars as needed and back them in. And I think that's what we're going to want to do here. From there, what we can do is, um, assuming these four cars here, sorry, these four cars here are towards where the engine is, we could just back them then uh, back through here or sorry, actually go back through the circle and then just deposit them right here. And so I think that's what we're going to do. So just to go over it one more time here. So, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Um, basically, we could have some problems with the switches if we were to pull forward and back it in here to B1L. Then we got to deal with some switching nonsense over here. I don't want to deal with that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the cars through the circle here, and then we can use this over here. So we'll drop uh, those two cars off. I think they're on the back of the train. Uh, I don't know. We'll cross that. If they're at the front of the train, that works even better, actually. But um, we'll cross that when we get to it. The point is we can take the cars here and we can back cars into here as needed uh, versus having to run all the way down here. I don't want to have to go all the way down here and then back up again. Uh, so and then we'll just back up again with the remaining cars and deposit them uh, over here where we will have cleared stuff. But the first thing we need to do is we need to back this uh, cut of cars here that we just dropped off. Uh, we need to move them back so that this car here is about right. You know, it, it ends right here. We'll detach right at this point here. So uh, let's get to that. OK, so I've hooked up to the cars there. I've released the brake there for it here, uh, the handbrake that is. Um, and we are rehooked up and everything's good to go here. So we got to push four cars back. Um, the interesting thing is, um, how are we going to tell exactly four cars here? That That's what's going to be interesting. So what we want to do is we want to back up to this point right here. Because uh, that'll be four cars worth right there. One car, two car, three car, four car. So it's a good idea to spot how many cars you want to back up before, you know, find a good, you know, re point of reference is what we're doing there. Uh, yes, I did the naughty thing of leaving it in reverse there, but I did put the brake on, so, you know, that's something. So we're just going to uh, give it a little bit of juice here. We don't need that much. We're just backing up four cars worth. I hope we have room down there. We should have room. They wouldn't assign us something that doesn't have room. Now, would they? They would. They would, but I don't think that's the case. This is a nice long bit of track here. So we've got, you know, a little over one car here. Um, let's actually get the brake somewhat prepped here. All right, one car. Half a car. Yeah, I'd say half a car. Let's uh, start braking here. Did we get it? Four cars? Oh, we're a little short. Darn. I, I see. I didn't I didn't have a good visual there. I should have been paying more attention on that bit. All right, we need a little bit more energy than that. Ooh. So I've been noticing this in the game. Uh, nothing's been very smooth uh, lately. It, it's been very jerky about transferring the motion there. Um, I noticed that in my uh, little personal playthrough that I've been doing. Uh, it's been helping me test some of the new mechanics in the game there. That, But yeah, we, we've got plenty of... Uh, you know, we're, we're the four cars back now. And we only need to set two brakes there. Once again, we're, tr we're trying for 20% of the cars should have their brakes on. All right. Let's do that. We're disconnecting. Uh, I don't know if we want to ready it or not. We're probably fine not readying that. We're going to be parking four cars here. Let's keep them somewhat separated, just in case something goes wrong. Not that I'm expecting it to. Okay, so next step 
is to pull forward here. We don't have a load now, so we want to be careful. And we want to get onto D2, right? What was it? Yeah, it's no, D6. Sorry, D6. D6 inbound right over there. Yep, there it is. D6. Okay, give it a little bit of break. We're breaking a little too hard, maybe. A little bit more break. Uh, right there. There we go, a nice soft touch. Okay, let's tie it in and then we'll accept the job. Uh, always a good idea, though, to verify that this is indeed the right cars. I mean, it, it looks like it, certainly, but let's just verify, um, yeah, SU-28 there. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we got that. Gotta actually open the valve there. We're hooked up nicely. Um, the game only has you do one car, uh, typically, right? Yeah. They don't do two cars. We can also verify that simply by... Yeah, I mean, it, it pretty much did, you know, we pretty much had a dumped air there, so... That's odd. Okay, so, according to this, a brake is still set somewhere. That's interesting. Uh, unless I did something wrong with the air hose, which is a possibility, but let's just check our brakes. Oh, here we go. This one was set, see? There we go. So if we uh, check our brake light here, it should be out. Yep, not flashing. Yep, not flashing. Let's go accept the job uh, and then also align the switches. They should be aligned though, I think. All right, we're accepting this job. Yep, we are now on the clock there. Okay. And so, as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the loop there to the, uh, as to the, um, to where we're headed. We're not going to, uh, back up there. Backing up's quicker, but not in the long run here for what we're doing. Also, until we have this unloaded, it's not going to be fun moving, you know, it's not going to be very fun adding and removing energy from this thing. You know, we've got plenty of brake power, but we do not have... You know, just look at the pull on this, just a notch one there. I could go to notch two, but we might risk uh, some wheel slippage there. Um, we can probably move to... You know, generally as a rule of thumb, I wait... You know, I, I look at a couple of things for determining, you know, the chances of wheel slip. For example, it's safe we can go to, you know, notch two now, and we're not probably going to get out notch two. We're not going to go, you know too much faster than this. So while we're getting going there, I'm just going to uh, make sure our switches are aligned for what we want. Um, yeah, the only switch that needs aligned is uh, pretty much the switch that connects B1 to this uh, bit right in here, but we're good to go now. I have to warn you, uh, in my personal playthrough, I clicked out to do something with uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, remote dispatch uh, mod. And when I clicked in, I accidentally clicked in on a switch, which derailed, you know, I ha I ha it happened like right here. I clicked in right here as a switch sign came up and I accidentally clicked on the switch sign. Uh, and uh, yeah, derailed a uh, engine and, and the train. It, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> so, do be careful where you click into with this stuff, is my advice. So yeah, we're going the long way. But look at how long it's taken us just to get up here to, you know, 20. I mean, I could have been a little bit more aggressive with it and stuff, but I don't really see a point in being too aggressive with it here. Um, not within the yard there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we... We pretty much just got up to 20, and we'd be breaking. So this is, um, 
know, when you've got heavy loads like this, sometimes it's nicer to just go the long way like this because we'd have to be trying to get it up to speed, you know, get it going again to back it in there. This just makes sense uh, for a number of reasons to do it this way. Plus, we get to show off this uh, yard in town a bit more. Yes, that that was definitely a primary reason for doing it the way we're doing it. Uh, let's be honest, the, the game's not quite that pretty. Eh, it's pretty, but not that. <laughs> also, I, I, I just now noticed we got another overhead bit there. I never really paid attention to that. Alright, let, let's keep our eyes on the road. Okay, so we're now coming up to our switch there. Interestingly, we lost, you know, about five kilometers through the turn there. That just shows you, you know, power of resistance right there. You know, rails don't, you know, the, the way trains are set up there, there's not, you know, comparative to other things, there's pretty low resistance there that a train encounters. But at the same time, when you have, the more cars you have, the more wheels you have, the more wheels you have, the more resistance there is. So... Interesting thing on how all that comes together. Now, the real question is, uh, you know, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna use uh, the train dispatcher there to kind of spot this, because uh, I think we're actually bigger than the yard limits with this. I'm actually gonna kick the brake off there. Um, Losing just a little too much speed. Also, once again, I gotta break a little bit earlier here because, you know, longer train. So here's here's our limits there. Ideally, we're going to uh, stop with the car just within. break off there. As I said, we're, we're, we're on the long side here. Alright, I think the coupler's on the other side of the sign, but that's alright. Okay, now we gotta get out. Uh, let's see here. I'm just curious, how long are we? Yeah, we're still in the switch here, so I think we're actually... Yeah, I mean, two of the cars are not in the loading or unloading area, so it may have us pull this forward a bit more. I don't know. Yeah, see, unloading air. Um, we gotta get more of the train in there, which means we actually have to go outside the sign there a bit. Uh, because the train doesn't actually fit in there. Uh, the first time this happened to me, it was really frustrating in the game. So for those of you who have never, you know, who are new to the game and haven't really experienced this phenomenon, it's quite aggravating. Alright, so I'm gonna have to do a rough estimate here and hope that we're not too far. Technically, I was using the wrong sign there, wasn't I? All right, let's try here. I'm gonna kick it out there. Let's let's be proper train safety, you know, follow the rules, all that good stuff. Uh, oh, no, I want to unload. Oh, come on. All right, this time it took, great. 